actually, I was thinking about my mother on yesterday, Sunday. And the reason I was thinking about her was because she, um, you know, we know my mother, she been going through her health problems. She been, you know, she's old, she's frail. My mother's 70 something years old and she's on the comeback trail. Shout out to my man, Ed Hennis. My mother's on the comeback trail. She, she been getting knocked down with all of these different health issues. And now we seeing us health start to build back up. But I was thinking like yesterday about her and I'm like, yo, we all know my mother as this nice, sweet, fragile old woman. But I grew up with this chick. My mother was like, like Rocky. She was like a five foot two Rocky. Like my mother, you know, just let me get, put things in perspective for y'all. I'm gonna give y'all a quick story, right? I always knew my mother to work two jobs. So, you know, we would come home, me and my brothers, we had to do household chores, make sure we eat, go to bed. And my mother would come in the house 12 o'clock, one o'clock, two in the morning. And when she walked in the house, I would be asleep. Like, I'm asleep. I got school next day, like the next day. And my mother would come in and the way she woke us up was with them hands. Like my mother literally would beat us out of our sleep at two in the morning. And this was like three, four nights out the week. And I'm like, what is the problem? But in our house, we all had chores. So it's six brothers. So my mother would be like, Monday, Sean, you got the bathroom Tuesday. You know, you got the kitchen, this, that, and the third. And she would come in and literally that time of night, go through the house and if anything was out of place and it didn't matter anything was out of place she woke you up swinging it was as simple as that and then half the time you get up and she'd be like who had the kitchen and it'd be one of my brothers but she just got through lumping me up now i gotta go to school tomorrow my lip is fat i'm stressed out like and i'm supposed to study <laughs> but Shout to my mother, right? This is, and you know, I, I, I'm i thinking of this because I'm thinking about the fight. I was thinking about her because I was thinking about the Floyd Mayweather fight. And that's a fight I didn't even bother to watch, y'all. Like, real talk. I know the fight was going on, but I was like, yo, I, you know, my mother, she, she was better with her hands than Logan Paul. And I'm looking at Floyd, and as a true fight fan, I couldn't watch that fight. Like, real talk, I couldn't watch it. And because Floyd, to me, is the, he's great. Like, that is the epitome of greatness right there. 50 and 0. He has fought some of the stiffest competition in their prime. And now you fighting Logan Paul? And when you saw him in interviews, all he was talking about is, I'm going to make a hundred million off this fight. So I'm like, yo, is Floyd... Like, is he strapped for cash? Is, is is right now, is he, you know, just desperate and, and he's broke like most other entertainers and boxers out there? But on top of that, like, let's look at this for what it is. This is combat sport, y'all. Like, it only take one punch. So I'm looking at Floyd like this man done lost his mind because if he get laid out by a lucky punch by Logan Paul, his entire legacy is destroyed. Floyd is 44 years old. Logan Paul is 26. 18 year difference. Floyd came into the fight 155. Logan Paul 189. 34 pound difference, y'all. Floyd is 5'8". Logan Paul 6'2". Everything was on Logan Paul's side. But experience. And when I woke up this morning, because I refused to watch it, I see Logan Paul, just a picture with his hands up. And I'm like, oh my God, tell me my worst fears didn't come to reality. Please tell me Floyd didn't get knocked out. And when I started to watch the highlights and read the articles, they said Logan Paul was celebrating because he went the distance. And this is what I need y'all to focus on and lock in. Logan Paul got the chance of a lifetime. The chance of, he's a YouTube star. 
He is not credible in this world. There is no reason he should be in the ring with one of the greatest people to ever lace up a set of boxing gloves. But for him, a win, for him, a win was going the distance. I'd rather lose on my feet than for you to knock me out in this ring. And then I went back and I saw the highlights and I started to read. And whereas I thought Floyd done lost his mind, this was just a money grab. Floyd looked sharp. He literally looked sharp. He didn't look like a 44 year old man. And it made me think, excellence. This man is still like, yes, this was strategic. Yes, the odds were in his favor. There was no chance except for a lucky punch that Logan Paul could win. But he was committed to excellence. He wouldn't have gotten that ring if it, in his mind he thought it was a chance that he had gotten rusty. If he thought it was a chance that, yo, I could get knocked out. And I started to think about my mother because whereas my mother used to come in and wake us up swinging, it planted a seed in me. And it was this seed of, it doesn't matter what you have. It don't matter that we don't have a lot, that we are living in an apartment in the Bronx. Take pride in what you do. You need to be committed to excellence. This is our house. This right here, I work hard for it. Even if it's not on Madison Avenue, even if it's not in Midtown Manhattan, I want this place to look a certain way because for me, I'm committed to excellence. And as I, this weekend, went out to a speaking date, and I can tell y'all, because y'all know me, I don't get in front of people. I don't get in front of this IG or in person without making sure that I try to come with something, not for me, but for y'all. And this Saturday, I'm speaking in Queens, and I couldn't come up with nothing. Two weeks, a week. Three, two, one. As the day countdown was going on, I'm like, my God, I have nothing to say to these people. I don't know what I'm going to talk about. I'm praying. I'm doing everything I know to do to get inspiration because I never want to come and just give people pre-prescribed stuff, stuff that was written before. I always try to ask God, God, speak through me. Because there's somebody who needs to hear something. There's somebody who needs motivation and inspiration. Just let me be the vessel. And I couldn't get nothing. And finally, Friday night going into Saturday, I didn't get an ounce of sleep. One ounce of sleep. And around five in the morning, I got it. It started to click. God just started, just ideas coming to me. And when I went out there on Saturday... I was supposed to have 15 minutes. They tell me you cut down to five. I'm like, what? I've been preparing for 15 minutes. Sean, you got to cut down to five. You going to tell me this now? Then when I get out there as much as I was going back and forth in my brain, what am I going to talk about? And when I finally got it, I get out there. We in Queensbridge, Pro Queensbridge Projects. And this is open to the public and about 13 people showed up and out of them 13 people who showed up, they eating hamburgers, listening to music, ain't nobody focused on that stage. And when the music dropped, they introduced me and it's just like Sean Press to the stage. I'm like, what? like, can I get a better, it, people don't even know why I'm there. But when I got up on stage. I treated it like I was in Madison Square Garden. I treated it like it was thousands of people out there. And even as I'm speaking, people are distracted, 
people are riding by on their bicycles. It's about four or five people who's focused on the stage, but it did not matter. What I learned when I was a young man that maybe I didn't get, that maybe I took for granted, that maybe now I should be taking my mother to jail for child abuse, that commitment to excellence, it was there. Even when nobody came to see me. And I'm giving you all this for a reason. Almost two years ago to the day, I got on Instagram and I made a decision to do this public speaking thing. And I told y'all from the beginning, use me as a case study. Use me so that you can see what it is like to build a business from the ground up. That's what I'm going to give back to y'all. I'm going to show up every day. I'm going to go hard every single day. But you're going to watch the ups. You're going to watch the downs. You're going to see me speaking before 15 people. And you're going to see me speaking before 1,500 people. But I'm asking you. Have you looked in the mirror lately? What have you started? What have you got working on? That after two years. After a year. After whatever length of time it's been. That you're still committed to. Because that commitment to excellence y'all it starts in the dark place it don't start with the friends in the likes in the follows in the subscribers it don't start with that it starts with nobody it starts with nothing but are you still committed to your dream are you still committed to winning because that winner's mindset that winner's mindset do you think Floyd Mayweather became a winner when he fought last night? Floyd Mayweather was thinking like a winner when he was that little boy in the gym. When nobody knew that name, when nobody recognized him, they knew his father, they knew his uncle. But what they didn't see was there was this little guy who was so committed, who said, I don't want to drink, I don't want to smoke. I am going to be laser focused with hard work, discipline, and I'm going to one day take over that game. Guys, the same way I'm putting it out there to y'all, use this as a status report. This is an update for y'all where I'm at in my journey. Where are you? What have you started that you can honestly say? I got from point A to point B, and now one more point C. And the good thing, even on my side, is now the world is opening back up. I done started on YouTube, IG, to Zoom, and now we hitting the ground, and that calendar is starting to book up. You see, it's happening. It's happening. Is it happening for you? Are you holding yourself accountable the way that you should? Do you have that winner's mentality that you absolutely have to have in order to achieve your dreams this ain't about motivation tonight this is a status report this is sean's report card what's up with your report card you don't need to tell me you don't need to tell nobody else look in the mirror tonight and you go down the list am i doing the things that i said i was going to do to get this business off the ground Am I doing the things that I said I was going to do to get a raise or promotion? Am I still as laser focused as I was when I made this commitment to myself? You don't need to tell nobody else. But look in the mirror tonight and you go through your own report card and see where you net out. If you're not getting A's and B's, A pluses, I'm asking you to go back and recommit to excellence, y'all. Real talk. Again, tonight is not about motivation. This is about that mirror. Go back and recommit to excellence. Get that winner's mindset back.